Hello, third grade scholars. This is Ms. Hendricks. We are going to do a read aloud. I will post videos um, every day of different chapters that we'll be reading. We are going to read the book, The Tale of Despero. This is a book about a very brave mouse who loves music and stories. And he also loves a princess whose name is P. He finds himself in the dungeon where he meets a rat named Roscuro. And we'll find about find out more about their adventures as we read. If you'd like to watch the trailer to the movie, you can do that. I link, I put a link for the trailer of the movie in the comments if you want to take a sneak peek at what the book is going to be about. This book is by Kate DiCamillo. She also wrote Because of Winn-Dixie, which we read earlier this year and I know many of you loved. Okay, we're going to get started. This is The Tale of Despero. There are some pictures throughout this book, so as I come across a picture, I'll show it to you and you can pause it if you want to look at it more. Okay. Chapter one, the last one. This story begins within the walls of a castle with the birth of a mouse, a small mouse, the last mouse born to his parents and the only one of his litter to be born alive. Where are my babies? said the exhausted mother when the ordeal was through. Show to me my babies. The father mouse held, on, held the one small mouse up high. There is only this one, he said. The others are dead. Mon Dieu, just the one baby mouse? Just the one. Will you name him? All of that work for nothing, said the mother. She sighed. It is so sad. It is such the disappointment. She was a French mouse who had arrived at the castle long ago in the luggage of a visiting French diplomat. Disappointment was one of her favorite words. She used it often. Will you name him? The father repeated. Will I name him? Will I name him? Of course I will name him. But he will only die like the others. Oh, so sad. Oh, such the tragedy. The mouse mother held a handkerchief to her nose and then waved it in front of her face. She sniffled. I will name him, yes, I will name this mouse Despero, for all the sadness, for all the many despairs in this place. Now where is my mirror? Her husband handed her a small shard of a mirror. The mouse mother, whose name was Antoinette, looked at her reflection and gasped aloud. Tilouze, she said to one of her sons, get for me my makeup bag, my eyes are a fright. While Antoinette touched up her eye makeup, the mouse father put Despero down on a bed made of blanket scraps. The April sun, weak but determined, shone through a castle window and from there squeezed itself through a small hole in the wall and placed one golden finger on the little mouse. The other older mice children gathered around to stare at Despero. His ears are too big, said his sister Merlot. Those are the biggest ears I've ever seen. Look, said a brother named Furlo. His eyes are open. Pa, his eyes are open. They shouldn't be. Open? It is true, Despero's eyes should not have been open, but they were. He was staring at the sun reflecting off the mother's mirror. The light was shining onto the ceiling in an oval of brilliance, and he was smiling up at the sight. There's something wrong with him, said the father. Leave him alone. Despero's brothers and sisters stepped back away from the new mouse. This is the last, proclaimed Antoinette from her bed. I will have no more mice babies. There's such the disappointment. They are hard on my beauty. They ruin, for me, my looks. This is the last one. No more. The last one, said the father, and he'll be dead soon. He can't live, not with his eyes open like that. But reader, he did live. This is his story. Chapter two, such a disappointment. Despero Tilling lived, but his existence was cause for much speculation in the mouse community. He's the smallest mouse I've ever seen, said his aunt Florence. It's ridiculous. No mouse has ever, ever been this small, not even a Tilling. She looked at Despero through narrow eyes as if she expected him to disappear entirely. No mouse, she said again, ever. Despero, his tail wrapped around his feet, stared back at her. Those are some big ears he's got too, observed his uncle Alfred. They look more like donkey ears if you ask me. 
They are obscenely large ears, said Aunt Florence. Despero wiggled his ears. His Aunt Florence gasped. They say he was born with his eyes open, whispered Uncle Alfred. Despero stared hard at his uncle. Impossible, said Aunt Florence. No mouse, no matter how small or obscenely large eared, is ever born with his eyes open. It simply isn't done. His pa, Lester, says he's not well, said Uncle Alfred. Despero sneezed. He said nothing in defense of himself. How could he? Everything his aunt and uncle said was true. He was ridiculously small. His ears were obscenely large. He had been born with his eyes open. And he was sickly. He coughed and sneezed so often that he carried a handkerchief in one paw at all times. He ran temperatures. He fainted at loud noises. Most alarmingly of all, he showed no interest in the things a mouse should show interest in. He did not think constantly of food. He was not intent on tracking down every crumb. While his larger, older siblings ate, Despero stood with his head cocked to one side, holding very still. Do you hear that sweet, sweet sound, he said? I hear the sound of cake crumbles falling out of people's mouths and hitting the floor, said his brother, Tulse. That's what I hear. No, said Despero. It's something else. It sounds like, um, honey. You might have big ears, said Tulse, but they're not attached right to your brain. You don't hear honey. You smell honey. When there's honey to smell, which there isn't. Son, barked Despero's father. Snap to it. Get your head out of the clouds and hunt for crumbs. Please, said his mother, look for the crumbs. Eat them to make your mama happy. You are such the skinny mouse. You are a disappointment to your mama. Sorry, said Despero. He lowered his head and sniffed the castle floor. But reader, he was not smelling. He was listening with his big ears to the sweet sound that no other mouse seemed to hear. So scholars, what we know right now is that Despero is very different from his family and the other mice. He has, he looks different. He's very, very small and he has huge ears that everybody talks about. And he also doesn't like to do the things that mice like to do. So while his brothers and sisters are looking for crumbs, he's listening to the, to what he hears around him. And the other mice think that that's very strange. Chapter three, once upon a time. Despero's siblings tried to educate him in the ways of being a mouse. His brother Furlow looked him took him on a tour of the castle to demonstrate the art of scurrying. Move side to side, instructed Furlow, scrabbling across the waxed castle floor. Look over your shoulder all the time, first to the right, then to the left. Don't stop for anything. But Despero wasn't listening to Furlow. He was staring at the light pouring in through the stained glass windows of the castle. He stood on his hind legs and held his handkerchief over his heart and stared up, up, up into the brilliant light. Furlow, he said, what is this thing? What are all these colors? Are we in heaven? Cripes, shouted Furlow from a far corner. Don't stand there in the middle of the floor talking about heaven. Move. You're a mouse, not a man. You've got to scurry. What, said Despero, staring at the light. But Furlow was gone. He had, like a good mouse, disappeared into a hole in the molding. Despero's sister, Merlo, looked, took him into the castle library where light came streaming in through tall, high windows and landed on the floor in bright yellow patches. Here, said Merlo, follow me, small brother, and I will instruct you on the fine points of how to nibble paper. Merlo scurried up a chair and from there hopped onto a table on which there sat a huge open book. This way, small brother, she said as she crawled onto the pages of the book, and Despero followed her from the chair to the table to the page. Now then, said Merlot, this glue here is tasty, and the paper edges are crunchy and yummy, like so. She nibbled at the edge of a page and then looked over at Despero. You try, she said, first a bite of some glue, and then follow it with a crunch of the paper. And these squiggles, they are very tasty. Despero looked down at the book, and something remarkable happened. The marks on the pages, the squiggles, as Merlot referred to them, arranged themselves into shapes. The shapes arranged themselves into words, and the words spelled out a delicious and wonderful phrase. Once upon a time. Once upon a time? Whispered Despero. What? Said Marlow. Nothing. Eat, said Marlow.
I couldn't possibly, said Despero, backing away from the book. Why? Um, said Despero, it would ruin the story. The story? What story? Merlot stared at him. A piece of paper trembled at the end of one of her indignant whiskers. It's just like Pa said when you were born. Something is not right with you. She turned and scurried from the library to tell her parents about this latest disappointment. Despero waited until she was gone, and then he reached out and, with one paw, touched the lovely words. Once upon a time. He shivered. He sneezed. He blew his nose into his handkerchief. Once upon a time, he said aloud, relishing the sound, and then, tracing each word with his paw, he read the story of a beautiful princess and the brave knight who serves and honors her. Despero did not know it, but he would need very soon to be brave himself. Have I mentioned that beneath the castle there was a dungeon? In the dungeon there were rats, large rats, mean rats. Despero was destined to meet those rats. Reader, you must know that an interesting fate, sometimes involving rats and sometimes not, awaits almost everyone, mouse or man, who does not conform. So scholars, because Despero is different from the other mice, the author is telling us that he is going to have a different life and that he's going to have to be brave. Chapter four, enter the pea. Despero's brothers and sisters soon abandoned the thankless task of trying to educate him in the ways of being a mouse, and so Despero was free. He spent his days as he wanted. He wandered through the rooms of the castle, staring dreamily at the light streaming in through the stained glass windows. He went to the library and read over and over again the story of the fair maiden and the knight who rescued her, and he discovered, finally, the source of the honey-sweet sound. The sound was music. The sound was King Philip's playing his guitar and singing to his daughter, the Princess P, every night before she fell asleep. Hidden in a hole in the wall of the princess's bedroom, the mouse listened with all his heart. The sound of the king's music made Despero's soul grow large and light inside of him. Oh, he said, it sounds like heaven. It smells like honey. He stuck his left ear out of the hole into the wall so that he could hear the music better. And then he stuck his right ear out so that he could hear better still. And it wasn't too long before one of his paws followed his head and then another paw. And then without really planning on Despero's part, the whole of him was all on display, all in an effort to get closer to the music. Now, while Despero did not indulge in many of the normal behaviors of mice, he did adhere to one of the most basic and elemental of all mice rules. Do not ever, under any circumstances, reveal yourself to humans. But the music, the music, the music made him lose his head and act against the few small mouse instincts he was in possession of. And because of this, he revealed himself and in no time at all, he was spied by the sharp-eyed Princess P. Oh, Papa, she said, look, a mouse. The king stopped singing, he squinted. The king was nearsighted, that is, anything that was not right in front of him was very difficult for him to see. Where, said the king. There, said Princess P, she pointed. That, my dear, P, is a bug, not a mouse. It is much too small to be a mouse. No, no, it's a mouse. A bug, said the king, who liked to be right. A mouse, said P, who knew that she was right. As for Despero, he was beginning to realize that he had made a grave error. He trembled, he shook, he sneezed, he considered fainting. He is frightened, said P. Look, he's so afraid he's shaking. I think he was listening to the music. Play something, Papa. A king? Play music for a bug? King Phillips wrinkled his forehead. Is that proper, do you think? Wouldn't that make this into some kind of topsy-turvy, wrong-headed world? If a king played music for a bug? Papa, I told you it's a mouse, said the pea. Please? Oh, well, if it will make you happy, I, the king, will play music for a bug. A mouse, corrected the pea. The king adjusted his heavy gold crown. He cleared his throat. He strummed the guitar and started to sing a song about stardust. The song was as sweet as light shining through stained glass windows, as captivating as the story in a book. Despero forgot all his fear. He only wanted to hear the music. He crept closer and then closer still until, reader, he was sitting right at the foot of the king. Chapter 5 what furlough saw. 
The Princess P looked down at Despero. She smiled at him. And while her father played another song, a song about the deep purple falling over sleepy garden walls, the princess had reached out and touched the top of the mouse's head. Despero stared up at her in wonder. The pea, he decided, looked just like the picture of the fair maiden in the book in the library. The princess smiled at Despero again, and this time, Despero smiled back. And then something incredible happened. The mouse fell in love. Reader, you may ask this question. In fact, you must ask this question. Is it ridiculous for a very small, sickly, big-eared mouse to fall in love with a beautiful human princess named P? The answer is yes. Of course it's ridiculous. Love is ridiculous. But love is also wonderful and powerful. And Despero's love for the Princess P would prove, in time, to be all of these things. Powerful, wonderful, and ridiculous. You're so sweet, said the princess to Despero. You're so tiny. As Despero looked up at her accordingly, Furlo, remember Furlo is Despero's brother, happened to scurry past the princess's room, moving his head left to right, right to left, back and forth. Cripes, said Furlo. He stopped. He stared into the princess's room. His whiskers became as tight as bowstrings. What Furlo saw was Despero Tilling sitting at the foot of the king. What Furlo saw was the princess touching the top of his brother's head. Cripes, shouted Furlo again. Oh, cripes, he's nuts. He's a goner. And executing a classic scurry, Furlo went off to tell his father, Lester Tilling, the terrible, unbelievable news of what he had just seen. Okay, scholars, so we've been introduced to Despero and his family, there are a couple questions now that I want you to think about. You can either talk about these questions with a family member if you're listening to this with a family member, or you can write them down and you could take a picture of it and send it to your teacher. So the two questions that I have for you are, what makes Despero different from other mice? And give examples from the book. The second question is, what is one of the rules that Despero breaks? Okay. So what I want you to do is pause this video so you can either talk to a family member or write these down now. So you can pause the video now. Okay, now that you've either talked to somebody about these questions or you've written them down, we're going to discuss them together. So the first question that we had was, what makes Despero different from other mice? And to give examples. So as I'm reading this book, I noticed that Despero is different in the way that he looks from other mice. So Despero is very small, remember? And he has huge ears that everybody thinks are too big for him. So he looks different from the other mice. Another thing is that he acts different from the other mice, right? So while the other mice are interested in finding crumbs and scurrying around and eating books, Despero hears this music and he smells honey and he wants to read the book and not eat it. So he acts different from the mice. So we know that he loves music, he likes to read, and he looks different from the other mice. The second question that I had for you was, what is one of the rules that Despero breaks? So if we go back in the video, and we know that Desp one of the main rules is that you are not allowed to reveal yourself to a human, so you never want humans to see you. But when Despero is listening to the music, he goes into the room and the princess and the king see Despero, which is one of the rules that Despero breaks. Okay, so that's chapters one through five of the tale of Despero. I hope that you answered the questions that we had for you and talked about this book with somebody who's reading it with you. The next video will be the next chapters of this book. Okay, bye scholars.